Hi Sagittarius and welcome to your reading. This is for September. So I hope you're all doing well and I hope you all have a good month. I'm not gonna lie, I am so confused with your reading today. I've just spent ages staring at the cards, just like, huh? <laughs> and, I, and I'm getting there, but it has taken a while. It is a random reading, so it's likely not going to resonate for everyone. So just bear that in mind, they, they don't anyway. Um, but it's given me a bit of a headache. So I think this is quite a complicated scenario that I'm dealing with. Um, so just bear with me as I'm trying to word it in a way that makes sense. So every reading that I've done, I've been pulling a colour that's supposed to help you with manifestation or your mood, your energy throughout the month. And for you guys, this made this is what I started with and it made total sense to me. This is if I was gonna pick some colours for Sagittarius, it would be something along the lines of orange and red. Something bright, something cheerful, something happy and fun. And I looked at them and I went, yep, yeah, that makes sense. And then I pulled all your tarot cards and I was like, huh? <laughs> so I feel like in terms of colours, surround yourself with colour that is either orange or red or pinky colours, something bright, something cheerful. I actually, I don't know, I'll say that later. And I feel like this is going to help you in terms of your energy and your mood and your manifestation. Okay, so we start the reading off with the High Priestess. Now, Gemini got this as well. Now that does make sense to me in a way because it's your opposite sign. So I think there's like a mirroring going on there between the two energies. So even if you're not dealing with a Gemini or have no Gemini in your chart, I feel like it makes sense anyway because of the Zodiac. So I feel like there's a mirroring between that reading and this reading. Um, the High Priestess, I feel, I feel like you're going through a process right now. This is how it eventually came to me. <laughs> You're going through a process. Something in your past is still plaguing you to some degree. And it it strikes me as um, the five stages of grief. That's what this is coming through to me as. The High Priestess is here and I said something similar. I don't normally get this for the High Priestess either, but I said something similar to Gemini in that it's quite dark in this card. Oh, I'm sorry, one second. Sorry about that. There was someone at the door, so I'm being interrupted now as well, which is not helpful. <laughs> so, as I was saying, I feel like you're going through a process and it's reminding me of the five stages of grief. And I feel I feel like it is a very dark card and I feel like this, this there was something about res feeling reserved, hiding yourself away, there's not a lot of shine to this card, not a lot of spark. It's very hidden. It's very, it's very, very much like the hermit to me in the context of this reading. I feel like there was an ending to something. With the world card and the death card here, it's pretty self-explanatory. There was an ending or there has been an ending. This can be the recent past or the distant past. It doesn't really matter. But it was a big ending for you. And it was a big turning point as well, where I feel like, I feel like it's been a difficult ending to accept or a difficult ending to put your emotions through. Now, coming out the other side, we've got the four of wands. So I'm going to show you what I see, right? If this is where you've been, this is where you're either going or where you are now. So I'm going to leave that up to you. But the point is, is that there's something about coming out of the dark and into the light. So that could be something that you're working through in September, that actually you're getting your groove back. You're getting your shine back. You're getting, you know, you're getting to that place where you're feeling more like yourself. You're feeling happier. You're feeling more content. You're feeling like things are a bit brighter for you, particularly if they haven't been. 
I feel like there's some difficult emotions that you're either suppressing or that you're having a difficult time suppressing at this point. When I asked how you were going to be feeling, we got grief in reverse. I left it in reverse because it fell out that way and resentful. Five stages of grief, right? Denial. And then we're coming out of that anger. That's how this kind of, that's the impression that this gives me. So I feel like, again, there was an ending that was difficult for you to accept or there was something that you observed, something that you saw that triggered this emotional reaction. Almost like you saw something and then you immediately felt grief from it. You felt hurt. And that's leading to feelings of anger or resentment. So I feel like it's almost like it, it's potentially confirmed an ending to you or it's confirmed something is not coming back around or something can't or won't happen again. It could have been the physical loss of someone for some of you. Um, you could have actually lost someone and that would explain the emphasis on grief and why perhaps there hasn't been a lot of this going on in your life. Because note that watermelon says, have fun with your inner child and apricot says, rejoice and laugh. So I feel like there hasn't been enough laughter. There hasn't been enough joy. There hasn't been enough celebration. Basically, there hasn't been enough of your typical energy. You know, what comes naturally to you, I would say, is all of those things. But that hasn't been happening enough because of this process you've been going through, because of this situation that had a difficult ending or a painful ending that caused you hurt and caused you to feel some difficult emotions and it could be because you observed something because you saw something and it does actually say total acceptance of what is so something became clear to you almost like that feeling of oh this has ended for me or oh okay that's not a possibility for me and it was something difficult to accept it was a difficult uh, experience to have and to lose but I feel like if it's something you've been dealing with for a while as well I feel like it's something in th the month of September you're coming out the other side of it could be still quite a slow process but I feel like you're going to be coming out the other side of that almost like you're entering into a new phase of your life. Now, I'm just thinking about all the things that we grieve in life because grief very much can, you know, we think of one thing, we think of death. But obviously we, we can grieve so many things in our lives. It doesn't take much really. The, obviously there's different degrees of grief and different levels of it, but it, we grieve nonetheless. So you can grieve the death of someone, you can grieve the end of a relationship, you can grieve um, a change that you go through within yourself. You know, when you change and you, you don't recognize yourself, that can trigger a grieving process. Um, if you've gone from single to in a relationship, you can grieve singlehood. You know, it, there's so many different ways you can grieve that we don't talk about. And I think it's important to talk about it because we're all having these experiences all the time. And the emotions as a consequence of that are difficult to deal with. And when you we don't label it as grief, which is what it is, then we almost minimize its importance, which makes it more difficult to work through. So I feel like even though I'm calling it a grieving process, that doesn't just mean death. That can mean so many different things. Basically, a significant change in your life that even if it's a positive one has meant that you've had to let go of something else. And that's not always difficult. That's not always easy to deal with. So I feel, I feel like you've gone through a massive shift to either a point where you don't recognize the old, your old self anymore because you've completely transformed and it's so you're you're trying to get used to the new you 
It can be you've had to move, you've had to move jobs, you've had to let go of someone in your life that was important to you. You've had you've lost a loved one, you know. Whatever it is, it's been important to you and it's triggered a lot of emotion within you. Now, this is what I think your focus needs to be on in September is your emotional well-being. Because even though the five stages of grief are normal and it's okay to feel any feeling that you have, it's it's not having that feeling that's the problem, it's what you do, it's what your actions are as a result of what you're feeling. So if you're in a state of anger, resentment, bitterness, jealousy even, again we're all afraid to say that we experience jealousy, we do, we're human, of course we're going to experience things like that and you shouldn't be ashamed but it's it's when those emotions take control of how you act that it becomes an issue. So really pay attention to how you're behaving in September and whether or not that's healthy for you and the people around you and perhaps where that's stemming from, where that's coming from and if something needs to be discussed or talked about so that you can release that emotion that it's not plaguing you anymore. If you need support, if you need help, ask for it, get it, know that you're worthy of having it and know that it will be beneficial to you and what you've been going through as well. But I feel too, something else that might help you and it's not always something that we want to do when we're dealing with quite heavy emotions is to give back. Now, like I said, it's not always the easiest thing to do when, when you're feeling like you're grieving and you're going through something, obviously it's important to take care of yourself. But sometimes the way you can do that is by helping someone else. Because, and that, and that can be in small ways, that doesn't have to, you don't have to give your all. It can be in little ways, but sometimes the act of giving back is the very thing that improves your mood and helps you overcome those difficult feelings. So it says random acts of kindness. So yeah, that's encouraged this month from you, you know, and also to accept random acts of kindness when they come your way, you know, when someone's helping you out, when someone's trying to give back to you to make sure that you're in a receptive energy so that you can enjoy that and you can take from that what you need. So we've got beliefs come true as well. So this is important for manifestation because none of us really understand the power of the mind and the power of what it can create. Sometimes how we view things simply affects how we experience them. And so I'm not saying that you should shove your emotions down and pretend to be happy or pretend to be positive about the situation when that's not how you're feeling. That would be a waste of everyone's time, but particularly yours. This is more so about finding a way to introduce happier, healthier moods and energy into your life to help you cope with what you've been going through. And again, that can come from the act of giving back and doing something nice for someone else. Because I think acts of service can really help you Take yourself out of your own life for a minute, just for a second, and focus on someone else that might need help more, you know? It can really just give you some perspective. Again, not to shame you in what you're feeling, because I'm sure what you're feeling is justified and what you're going through is painful and difficult. But I do think that acts of service, I'm just talking from personal experience, it helps me. When I don't and I focus solely on my problems and solely on my my own life and myself, I suffer more. (laughs) I suffer more. So for me personally, what helps me is by giving back and helping other people and being of support to others because it reminds me that A, there's other people going through things so I'm not alone and B, that I can still be of use and I can help myself whilst helping other people. It's like a win-win, right? 
reprogram the subconscious mind. So yeah, something about your subconscious is influencing how you're dealing with this difficult ending or transition that you've been going through. So something from way back in the past could actually be affecting you today. Yeah, I feel it's a really confusing reading, I won't lie. It's a really confusing energy and I hope some of what I've said has made sense and has helped you. I do think these emotions will pass. They're already transitioning. You're already moving from a state of grief and sadness to anger, which granted is probably not the transition you would choose, but it's a transition that tells me that you are already working through what you need to work through. It's already changing. You just have to be a bit careful with this, that that anger doesn't turn into a behaviour that hurts you and other people more. A healthy outlet is what you need. You know, you need an outlet for what you're feeling rather than bottling it all up. You just need to make sure that you're making that a priority for yourself so that you can get those emotions out there in a healthy way so that they're not impacting you negatively with other areas of your life. I would also caution you as well with perspective. And okay, this kind of gives me that feeling of, you know, when let's say you're on social media and you look at someone on social media, you might not even know who they are. You might just have stumbled across them. And it could be one of them, you know, one of them videos where it's like, it's like an influencer that's traveling the world and you're just looking at them making loads of money from it. And you're just looking at them going, <sighs> and you, your perspective is like, I want that to be my life. Why did that get to happen to them and not me? You know, that kind of, that kind of perspective is not only bad for you because you're comparing, but also it's, especially with social media, you can't always trust what you see. You can't always believe what you see because what you're seeing is such a small amount of someone's life that you don't know what's going on for them it, the rest of their life. You have no idea. You know one, one thing that's happening to them based on what they're choosing to show you, which is the good parts, right? So try and avoid that to the best of your ability because what might look great to you may not be all it's cracked up to be, you know? That person that you're viewing on social media they're going to have their own issues. They're going to have their own problems. They're going to be dealing with their own rubbish that, you know, is is just as difficult and just as annoying. And the only difference is, is that you're not seeing theirs, you know, because they're not choosing to show that. So really watch that if that sounds like that resonates for you as well, because sometimes social media, as much as I like to use it <laughs> for obvious reasons, um it's not always the healthiest. It's not always the best. Um, it's not always what you need. Sometimes you need a break from things like that. In fact, maybe you should take a break from online activity because sometimes that can be causing, making things worse for you than it's helping. Essentially take care of yourself this month. I don't think it's going to be a bad month because I think whatever you, whatever's happened has already happened. This isn't something that's coming up or something that you're going to be faced with randomly. I think it's something that's already happened in the past and you're just dealing with the consequences of the emotions that have stemmed from what's happened. And you just have to be patient with yourself. I know you hate that word, but really be patient because it will be beneficial to you in the end. I can already see that you're moving to a better place. You're moving to a more positive place in your life. It's just past residual energy takes some time to remove and um, you will get there, you will get there and you'll start to see things in a different way. Okay, oh I didn't pull you an advice card and of all people I feel like we probably need it for this reading more than the others. <laughs> Ooh, 
you've got two. Okay, yeah, <laughs> okay. Frog spirit, first of all, clear out the clutter. I would say that's emotional clutter. This one in particular though, owl spirit, you see clearly now. What was I saying? It's kind of like this, this feeling of observing. You've seen, you've accepted something for what it is. And that's sometimes the most painful move you can make. It's the healthiest move you can make, but it's the most painful because you're not blinded to things anymore. So you're doing a great job. I should probably say that as well, that you're doing a great job because acceptance is hard. It is really hard. Again, we don't give that enough credit that it deserves. Um, but yeah, you see clearly now, you know, you understand something um, that you didn't before. And I feel like you've taken action um, to align with that. And that's been hard, but beneficial and will be beneficial in the long run. So where is the book? Okay. So I'll read both out because you will need both, I assume. Okay, so it says frog spirit. Clear out the clutter. Frog spirit knows that while all the other frogs are croaking away, this is a time for you to simplify and declutter your life so you can feel content on your own lily pad. <laughs> Even when life isn't creating a total cacophony. I've actually never heard that word before. We can become drawn to the excitement of lots of noise. Then the next thing we know, our schedules and our homes are cluttered with commitments we regret making and objects taking up valuable space. Even relationships need decluttering as they often become messy. Frog spirit appears to tell you to clean house, prioritize what you need and get rid of or give away the rest so you can have some space in your day and in your head. You don't need the old stuff and it's stories shouting at you about the past. Isn't that the truth? I feel like that's probably the most, that if I was going to name this video, it would probably be that line. Along with physical clutter, friendships are sometimes kept long past their expiration date, weighing you down with unnecessary baggage. Now is the time to let go. Coming from someone who finds it really hard to lose people from their life, I agree with this. <laughs> I agree with what it's just said. We outgrow people. We don't, but we don't always um, take action to show that. We don't always, we don't want to lose people. And we, sometimes we think we have to wait until something really bad happens before we can move away from someone. But that's not the case. If someone, if you're just not aligning with someone anymore, if you're just not, getting on with them if you you just don't understand who they are you know sometimes that in itself is enough to take a step back you know it doesn't have to be something drastic that happens for you to lose people from your life it's it's based on what you need most and what you need less of in your life at any given time so don't basically don't wait until something bad happens before you take action to remove people from your life who shouldn't be there anymore Whatever you need will appear when you need it. So release your grip on all that clutter that is making you feel anxious and burdened. Frog spirit wants you to reclaim your space, unencumbered by shoulds, oughts and could have beens. Yeah. Another thing we shouldn't be doing in our lives is thinking, well, what if I'd done that instead? It's not helpful. We didn't do it, you know, and, and there was probably a good reason for that. And that's not always easy to accept either, but it, there'll be a reason, you know, and you've just got to trust your decisions, that it was the right one that you made at the time, or it was the best one you could have made at the time. Let go and jump. You are free from all that old stuff. Exactly. That's what I mean. You've, got, you've kind of already been going through this process and you're going to be coming out the other side. Okay, so 43. Owl spirit, you see clearly now. Owl spirit arrives to remind you that the wisdom within you is informed by your keen senses and the wisdom within the consciousness we all share. Even in the darkest night, the owl sees clearly and is guided by every sense it has, including the first sense of intuition. Right now, your sensitivities are turbocharged and you are receiving messages from all directions. Ooh, that's great. So yeah, pay attention to your dreams pay attention to your instincts. They're really giving you a good indication of what, you know, how you should move forwards. 
Owl spirit reminds you to be wise and pay attention to what's between the lines, what is invisible to the naked eye, what cannot be heard with the ears and what others may not be able to perceive. It's quite a big ask, but try your best. With all the senses aroused, you have much knowledge available to you. Clarity will come as you sit with all that you are sensing, allowing your intuition to guide you in understanding the whole and not just the parts. Let your wisdom arise and be your guide as you trust the acuity of all your, sens all your senses. <laughs> intuition is real and can provide the clarity you need to understand your situation right now. Your relationship, your finances, your job, whatever it is, you can see the truth clearly now. Yes. Okay, I'm going to stop talking now. It was a ridiculously long reading, but I kind of thought it would be given that I was struggling to get the message, but I feel like I ended up being on the right lines for those of you that needed to hear it. Okay, so have a good month, take care of yourself, and I will speak to you again soon. Bye.